it's gonna photograph well. So if you are getting married, if you have a special occasion coming up, maybe you have to get photos done as part of your work. These are kind of products I think really perform very, very well. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited today to be chatting about my red carpet makeup favorites. I've tried hard not to include any skincare in here because I want it to just be everything that were kind of my go-to makeup favorites. There's some pieces here I use Naomi Watts, there's pieces here I use on Chelsea Handler and lots of other clients. In the spirit of my upcoming free training, which is how to become a six-figure creative freelancer and book celebrity clients in any market, that is on June the 20th. I'll pop the link in the description box. I wanted to talk about my favorite red carpet beauty products. I think everything we're gonna show you still exists. Hopefully nothing's been discontinued. A lot of them I know haven't. I know a lot of them are still kind of make party staples today, but I was having a look through my kit and I was like, has anything changed? Is there anything that I think has updated what I would have previously shared maybe? Let's get into it. I should just point out as well, the mark on my hand is a burn, not makeup. Just FYI in case anyone thinks I haven't uh, cleaned my hands. I don't think any of these will massively surprise you. Tell me in the comments if anything does. But the first one I'm gonna share is uh, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is, which shade is this? This is two. The fact it comes in so many shades now obviously makes it a makeup artist's favorite. I feel like this is the perfect amount of glow for red carpet. So for context and reference, when you are doing makeup for the red carpet, it's a lot different than say, makeup for a photo shoot or something that could be retouched where the lighting is easier to control. When you're doing someone for red carpet makeup, the reality is it's gonna be photographed probably by paparazzi flash. So there's obviously very heavy flash you have to think about, but there's also lots of people using different kinds of cameras and different kinds of angles. So as a makeup artist, it's a lot harder to control things like lighting and how things are going to show up. So finding products you really love is definitely where you invest a lot of your time, thinking about trying things out with camera flash and thinking about how they will photograph under different kinds of lighting. But this one I love because it's like the perfect amount of glow. It's not glittery, it's not too much. I feel like you can mix it into foundation. There's so many ways you can use this. And it is one of those products that I still, I purchase the minis. I love it on myself. I love it on every age, every skin tone, every skin type. I find it very universally flattering. Okay, I didn't intend for this to be like in order of like base, eyes, lips and all that stuff, but it may, it may end up being that way. I would still say, and I looked through all my foundations and I was like, is it still this one? Or would I choose another one? And while there's definitely foundations that I do like to use for different scenarios for makeup on other people, I still think if I had to pick a red carpet favorite specifically for the reasons I just mentioned at the beginning, it would still be Armani Luminous Silk. And I think the main reason is that again, you can manipulate how you want the finish to be. And it's actually, for saying it's called Luminous Silk, I still think this is more of a matte foundation. It leans more satin, at least in the camera, and that's why I like it and have used it for so many years. And I think so many other makeup artists do too. And it just stays one of those kind of cult iconic status products. So when it comes to concealers, again, same as foundation, there are different concealers I would use for different things. So for example, covering um, spots or acne, there are different kinds of products I would use. However, if I had to pick a favorite concealer that I feel like really became a part of my red carpet makeup kit, especially again, the last three years, and it didn't get replaced, it was the Dior uh, Skin Correct Forever Concealer. The shade range, I think this came in 25 shades. It might be more now, it's either 20 or like 25. For me with red carpet, it's all about being able to manipulate product. I think as a makeup artist, your main goal is to think about how you can stretch product, how you can generate different uses out of it so that it suits everyone that sits in your chair. And this was one of those concealers where a little bit went a really, really long way. You could take the coverage to look very natural, but it also created coverage when you were being very intentional with creating coverage. So for that reason, I still think it's one of the best. I have yet to try the Backstage Concealer from Dior, so I don't know how it compares to that, but this is still one I used mine again recently. I got very into the Shiseido one recently, but I still think again for red carpet, this one you can't beat. Okay, so let's move into the category of eyeshadows. Now, I think the base products definitely really sit on their own within being very red carpet specific eyeshadows. I think there's a lot more brands and price points that are very high performing across the board. And obviously, while I appreciate this is my kind of red carpet favorites, 
how I would approach that as a consumer is it's gonna photograph well. So if you are getting married, if you have a special occasion coming up, maybe you have to get photos done as part of your work. These are kind of products I think really perform very, very well. So I was thinking about eyeshadows, especially when it comes to powders, because for the longest time I have used creams and I still love creams as a base. However, there are two brands that I think do incredible quality when it comes to eyeshadow. The first is Juvia's Place, the chocolates palette, this one, I still think is like a makeup artist go-to. It's such a good palette. And like this shade is, oh, it's just such a good shade of brown. Just do such a beautiful quality of eyeshadow and they are richly, richly pigmented. The second one I ended up using a lot in my pro kit was Surratt. So Surratt eyeshadows, let me put this one close up so you can see. I have a mix of tones here. This was a palette I used to use a lot for red carpet actually. Not even shimmers, more like those kind of pearl finishes that look really, really beautiful again on all ages. Just very, very flattering. And again, they catch the light very beautifully. The matte I think Juvia's place, you just can't beat them. For a really beautiful quality shimmer that doesn't feel glittery or chalky, I think Surratt was one of those brands that, again, it's kind of like a makeup artist hero product. It just always performs. We've talked kind of mattes, we've talked pearl eyeshadow. If there's one thing that I think, especially in the past kind of like five years of being a makeup artist, something I've seen, is the rise of like lid toppers. So definitely kind of bringing in an element of sparkle, like the placement's very specific. So sometimes it's the inner corner of the eye, sometimes it's kind of in the middle of the lid, like the halo lid. And I think bodyography were a big component of this becoming like trendy, especially the shade halo. So again, I think this is one of those shades that every makeup artist has in their kit, because if you had no other shade, and again, here it looks very silvery, but when I swatch it, it has this kind of light reflective crystal vibe that it doesn't matter what color the eyeshadow is, even if it's warm, it's a very, very clever eyeshadow, this one from Bodyography. Like I remember at the time, like Hourglass coming out with the scattered lights. I remember lots of other brands were doing lid toppers. I think that's because it's such a kind of a universal product. So if you haven't got Bodyography Halo, I kind of feel like it's the one lid topper everybody needs in their makeup bag because you can do so much with it. So again, even now I've kind of like blended it more on my hand you can just see like how it catches the light. It's like part highlighter, part sparkle, part shimmer. It's one of those products that I just think is very, very clever. The whole concept for me of like red carpet makeup is how can you manipulate products so you can mix that into colors. You can take a matte eyeshadow, make it not a matte eyeshadow. You can choose where you're adding the shine very quickly. And I just think it gives the illusion of a wet lid without you having to use any gloss on the lid, which as we know for red carpet, it's gonna move around. So it's a lot harder to replicate the look of a glossy eye unless you're using something like the Bodyography uh, pigments. If there is one lipstick that became like my go-to lipstick of choice for red carpet, it was when Lisa brought out the velvet lipsticks. In particular, velvet ribbon like it just makes me happy opening this i'm gonna bring it close to the camera and see if it will pick up the velvet texture this is actually a fresh opened one because my other ones are smushed into palettes but i have this as reserve backup especially velvet ribbon this color this is spoiler alert the color i used on naomi watts for sundance film festival and she loved it she was obsessed with it everyone was asking me what red it is and it's one of those reds it's a very true red has a little bit of blue in it, a little bit of blue, but it's very complimentary on every single skin tone. And again, the depth of the intensity, it's just such a good red. It's super long lasting. The matte is comfortable. And I think that's why it became one of those lipsticks that really stayed in my kit for the fact that clients would say, this is such a comfortable matte lipstick, as opposed to having lipsticks that looked amazing for the first half hour of wearing them, but then they felt dry they kind of cracked their lips and every time they were reapplying it kind of slowly looked worse and worse 
you do not get that with Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Lipstick. So that is definitely a red carpet staple. So this brand I think gets like 10 points across the board for pencils in general, because there are so many, again, like hero shades that I feel like if you ask any makeup artist, they would be like, yeah, I have that in my kit. Yeah, I have that in my kit. And I've chosen the lip pencils versus the eye pencils because there's another brand I also love for eye pencils but it is MAC lip liners. So again, I have a mix of shades here. Um, of course, we have red, we have Ruby Woo, we have Cherry, Heroine, I have Lasting Sensation, and I have Magenta. Like these ones are always in my red carpet bag. And again, even if I was to lose a lipstick, I could use one of these lip pencils literally as a lipstick. Like they are, give so much lasting power to any lipstick underneath them. MAC is so good at thinking about shades. And there are so many shades that I really hope they never discontinue because they work across the board. Again, the quality is there. Of course, MAC was made by a makeup artist for makeup artist, but I just feel like the colors they do are so, so good. And so then for eye pencils, I was thinking about like, which was the brand that I went to the most for red carpet. And yes, I have a lot of MAC ones. There's a lot of brands that I loved, but actually my favorite was the Endless Silky Eye Pen from Pixie. There's two brown shades here that I used all the time. Um, I have like a more matte brown and then a more shimmery brown, Copper Glow, and then Black Cocoa was two that I just love. Like I use those so much. Again, they blend beautifully. They have a kind of gel creamy eyeshadow feel that then blends and then sets and locks into place. And the intensity of those crayons is super, super deep, which I love. I, I would rather have something look like the color I see and be able to sheer it out. So they were something that I still think, and I have mini ones in my own travel makeup bag absolutely love them still a red carpet essential and then last but not least if there was one thing that became so synonymous with red carpet makeup artists in particular i think it was kind of the depotting phenomenon <laughs> and i had to give like an honorable mention to artist kit company is one of the brands that i think really kicked this off from a place of making kit staples more accessible, easier to carry and have more in your kit without taking up more room. So I was looking through my kit and I was like, if I had nothing else, like I could do, just add in mascara. So many of my makeup items are still in these. So for example, eye gloss. Okay, I have my eye gloss one. I have cream eyeshadows, like I mentioned earlier, I have loads of cream eyeshadows. And even if they shrink, I just use the Inglot Dura line to bring them back to life, that always works. Again, I have cream blushes in here. I have contour and glow. I have brow pomades. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to show these because I think it's important to see that not everything stays in its perfect container. Makeup Forever, again, sometimes I use those as like eye bases and then would set them with a matte shadow. Oh no, sorry, they were the matte paint sticks. I carried a couple of like emergency shadows, like if any of the palettes I had ever broke of like my favorite go-tos, cool tones, the Ritual Defee, cream shadows, and then I have tons for lips as well. But again, I just wanted to give an honorable mention that I think these are something that being a makeup artist is not just even more fun, but so practical and obviously saved our backs. And I do actually make these for myself now as well. So I have a video called like, I think it's like DIY look in a palette or something like that, where I show you how you can kind of make your own, which is, especially great if you travel a lot. Just thought in, it will be fun to talk about kind of my favorite red carpet products and see which ones still hold true. Like which ones would I still go and pick up again and again and again. So like I said, we have a free training training coming up, which will be how to become a six figure creative freelancer and book celebrity clients in any market, which is coming on June the 20th. And I would love you to come join us. It's gonna be so incredible. I'm gonna be showing you how I got my first celebrity client without an agent, um, the skill set you really need to be able to book celebrity clients and become a six figure freelancer. We're just going to have a ton of fun and there'll be some surprises there. There'll be some extra bonuses. So come join us on 20th of June. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if anything surprised you. Was there anything here that you were like, oh, you didn't show that and I thought you would. Um, maybe you'll jog my memory as well of anything I might have missed, but I hope you're all having a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.